like a ton of bricks and I immediately started crying because this kid has never seen me without a shroud, without a mask. It was the first day I've ever met him and it just stuck with me so, so much. And I actually had the privilege to be able to watch him come back. Bienvenue. Welcome to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier where we will discover the tales, trials, and talents of Renaissance Festival performers, merchants, and die-hard attendees as we journey by way of light-hearted and even, at times, heartwarming conversations about the Renaissance Festival world. I am your host, Theodore Jander, a.k.a. King Francois Premier. Bonjour. Welcome to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. I am your host, Theodore Jander. In this episode, I will be highlighting the upcoming 2024 Renaissance Festivals here in the U.S. with their names and upcoming January, February, and March dates. As a reminder, let it be known that at least one Renaissance Festival occurs each weekend of the year, or almost every weekend. The one exception would be the weekend right before and after Christmas, depending on what day Christmas falls. That is when you would not be able to find a Renaissance festival. Needless to say, if you are longing for that Ren Faire fix and are willing to travel many miles, well, you can take a step back in time every weekend if you so choose. But before we begin our festival excursion, here is the response I received from fellow performer Audrey Beale, where she shares her coffee preferences and a favorite Ren Faire experience story. So, grab a cup of your favorite brew, sit back, and enjoy this episode of Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. For short chat segments included in episodes like the one you are listening to now, where I go solo, I send three questions to an individual for them to record their responses. Before each of their recorded answers, I will provide the question asked of them. As coffee is part of this podcast, the first two questions are coffee-oriented. The final inquiry is about a favorite Ren Faire experience story. So to begin... Hello, my name is Audrey Beale, and I play a mermaid with the St. Louis Renaissance Festival. I've also played Dance Macabre with them. I've also done a little bit with the fairies and a little bit with the travelers. As a coffee drinker, how do you take your coffee, and do you have a favorite roast? So I'm the kind of person who likes really sweet coffee. So I normally have like a caramel cappuccino with a little bit of extra sugar, probably some whipped cream, or if I'm at Starbucks, I add some sweet vanilla cold foam. Tell us about your favorite coffee shop. Where is it located? And what makes it your favorite coffee stop? What do you like about it? My favorite coffee shop would have to be The Proving Ground out in Illinois. They're a smaller shop. They always have kind of new brews coming out and new flavors. Uh, one year they had a lavender latte with real lavender buds on it, so that was really good. Um, it's just a very cozy environment. My my friend brought me there, and I was I was sold. I loved it. Uh, they also have amazing food. I love their potatoes, but their coffee is really good as well. I myself have experienced numerous and memorable encounters with patrons, cast, guest performers, and merchants. So, as a performer at a Renaissance festival, what is one of your favorite memories or two you would like to share with my listeners and me? I would have to say that my favorite experience working with the Ren Fair would have to be my first year. We we're walking around as Dance Macabre, and Dance Macabre wears all black, black shroud with a white mask. And we don't talk to anybody, but we always talk to this one kid. And we were walking him through Mermaid Cove. He was holding my hand, and he was holding my other friend's hand. And he looked at me right in the eyes, 
the, well, the eye holes because he couldn't see my eyes, but he looked at me right in the eye holes and he said, don't worry, people are afraid of me too. And that hit me like a ton of bricks and I immediately started crying because this kid has never seen me without a shroud, without a mask. It was the first day I've ever met him and he had nothing, like no backstory on my struggles with alopecia or my struggles with getting different diagnoses throughout my life. And it just stuck with me so, so much. And I actually had the privilege to be able to watch him come back as a cast member with the RenFest. So that was probably my favorite experience. I would like to express my gratitude for Audrey's willingness to answer these few questions and to participate by recording her responses for this short chat segment. It really was a delight to hear her story. Now, on to 2024's Festivals, 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 Installment 1. As was done for the show notes of similar previous episodes, I am including the website addresses and full run dates for the mentioned festivals. Let's begin. First up, the festivals beginning in January. We head to Opelousas, Louisiana, to visit the village of Glain for the Acadiana Renaissance Fair, which begins this weekend, January 6th and 7th, and finishes up on Sunday, February 4th. We venture to Melbourne, Florida for the Brevard Renaissance Fair. Opening weekend is also January 6th and 7th, concluding on Sunday, February 4th. The setting for this festival is that of the Shire of Wickham. If wishing to meet newly forged champions, we can travel to Palestine, Texas for the Fair of Champions, running weekends from January 6th through February 11th. Further east, we discover Uhuberg Castle, which is an actual castle in Helen, Georgia, home to the Castle Fair at Uhuberg Castle, the weekend of January 12th through 14th. A side note about this castle. Translating from German to English, Uhu is Eagle Owl and Berg is Castle. Therefore, Uhuberg means Eagle Owl Castle. The name was chosen to reflect the philosophy and wisdom of the owl, the castle's mascot. I must say, this place looks like a real hoot. Uh, you all know I could not let a pun like this escape my talons. <clears throat> Anywho, we pull up our bootstraps as we return to Texas, specifically Kerrville, Texas, for the Kerrville Renaissance Festival, which begins its 2024 season on January 20th and draws to a close on Sunday, February 4th. The next two festivals bring us to sunny Florida. First, in Bonita Springs, we find the Venezia Renaissance Fair, which runs weekends January 20th through 28th. Second, we make our way to Gainesville, Florida, the weekend of January 27th and 28th for the Hogtown Medieval Fair. This festival is temporarily taking place at Depot Park while the organizers continue working to secure a more permanent location. To note, admission shall be free for this season's one weekend event. As we move into February, our journey takes us to Yuma, Arizona for the one weekend only Two Rivers Renaissance Fair, which begins its festivities on February 2nd and wraps up on Sunday, February 4th. The Two Rivers Renaissance Fair is set in the village of Tamsinbrook. Even though colder temps further north may deter most from attending a Renaissance festival, the Vermont Winter Renaissance Fair offers an indoor solution. This event opens for one weekend only, February 3rd and 4th, and is held at the Champlain Valley Exposition in Essex Junction, Vermont. Our Ren Fair journey takes us back to Arizona, this time to Apache Junction for the Arizona Renaissance Festival, where you will visit the village of Fairhaven. Opening weekend kicks off on February 3rd. The festival will be open each weekend through March 31st. 
From Arizona, we return east to Deerfield Beach, Florida. Opening February 3rd and running each weekend through March 24th is the Florida Renaissance Festival in Deerfield Beach. As you walk through the gates into the village of Kimmendale, be ready for their opening weekend theme, Cauldron of Chaos, the Rise of the Wizards. Staying in Florida, our travels take us to Dade City, Florida for the Bay Area Renaissance Festival. This fair opens on February 17th and takes place each weekend through March 31st. We will find ourselves traveling back in time to the village of Fiddlesworth. We now move on to festivals beginning in March with a trip to the inaugural and fully bilingual English and Spanish Heartlands Renaissance Festival in Gustine, Texas. They open March 1st and run weekends through April 14th. On the weekend of March 2nd and 3rd, Greenville, Alabama is our next destination where we can step back in time to the year 820 and the Kingdom of Dragoncroft for the Alabama Medieval Fantasy Festival. Milton, Florida draws us further east for the one weekend only Gulf Coast Renaissance Fair and Pirate Festival on March 2nd and 3rd. The era of Robin Hood brings us to McDade, Texas for the Sherwood Forest Fair set in, well, Sherwood Forest and Nottinghamshire and runs each weekend from March 2nd through April 21st. We venture a wee bit north on March 9th through 10th to Veneta, Oklahoma for the one weekend only Grand Lake Renaissance Festival set in the village of Queens Ferry, Scotland. A side note, this event is indoors. However, the following weekend, March 16th and 17th, Veneta, Oklahoma hosts the outdoor one weekend only Queens Ferry Renaissance Festival, also set in 1540 Queens Ferry, Scotland. We close out the month of March in Guthrie, Oklahoma, March 22nd through 24th for the Guthrie Renaissance Fair. In the event I missed a Renaissance festival or two, please reach out to me through my website, which I do provide at the close of the episode. And you can also find that information in the show notes. That wraps up this installment of Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. I do hope you enjoyed this informative episode. To find out more about the festivals mentioned, check out their links in the show notes. Be on the lookout for the next installment of Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. If you are a performer, artisan, merchant, staff, or diehard patron in or of the Renaissance Festival world and would like to be featured on Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier, reach out to me by way of clicking on the following link provided in the show notes. www.theodorejander.com slash coffee talk podcast. Would you like to receive early access to each new episode as well as receive a behind-the-scenes glimpse into the production and creative process for the podcast? If so, join the wonderful community of listeners supporting the show and making new things possible through Patreon. Learn more at www.patreon.com slash coffee talk with King Francois. Thank you so much for tuning in to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. Abiento, see you soon, ciao for now, and au revoir.